We start with uh, P47, is that right? And that's a uh, continuance. So you're not going, we don't read that? I will um, provide the Proof. publication. Yes. Okay. yes. Okay. Um, item, um, P47 item P47 was published. was published in the Tampa Bay Times on December 16th, 2020. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Denise Hernandez, Planning and Development. Item P47 is PD 10097 as you stated, this is for a uh, request for continuance to the April 20th, 2021 Board of County Commissioners meeting at 1.30 in Coleridge. Move to continue. Time certain. Okay. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion passed 5-0. E 48 Item P48 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on February 21st, 2020. And P48 is PD210284. This one is also for a continuance to the April 20th, 2021. We're going to have the Commission's meeting at 1.30 in the Commission. Move to continue. Time certain. Thank you. Okay. Okay, got a motion and a second to continue. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion passed 5 0. P49. Proof. Item P49 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on January 24th, 2020. On the west side of Wesley Chapel Boulevard, south of Hyde Park Boulevard. This provides greater repeat of severability and an effective date. Today we're asking that you adopt the comp plan amendment. I will follow. Okay. Um, applicant presentation. Is there an applicant presenting? The applicant should be present. <coughs> Is the rest of that property wet? Yes, the rest of that property is, um, most of that property is wet. It's, um, there's a, uh, an agreement for a sale between Swift Mud and the current owner. So some of that is going to stay within um, the upper area. It's just the upper area. Okay. okay. Applicant's not here. Mr. Chairman, I am present. Oh, I hear it now. Mr. Chairman, I'm Michael Horner, 14502 North Hill Mary Highway, representing the Avenue. I can't hardly hear. Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? Not really. We're not hearing you very well. Uh, but I bet it's going to be approved, and you don't have to speak. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am here to answer any questions. And I thank you so much. This is a straightforward plan amendment. And we have staff recommendations, no opposition. And to answer your question, this is only for the upland acreage, no well. Okay. Is anyone here to speak against this item in the public? Move to approve. Let me get my, talk about it for a little bit. Oh, you want to talk? Well, no, you want, no you I, want I, to yeah, Mr. Chair. So, Okay. Um, so we're going to um, we're going to as it states we're going to office on this property from res. All right, Mr. Chairman. We, if the commission can we get through seeing whether there's anybody at the kiosk? We're gonna need, need to go and, through all public hearing first. Well, fine. There was a motion made. I wanted nobody. to. So, I, so. I understand. Yeah. yeah. We know you're in a hurry, but <laughs> I, I, wait a second. Is anyone uh, signed up to speak on WebEx or? Is there anything? No WebEx and no email on this. No item. email. Okay. Is anyone at the kiosk to speak to this item? What do you have the dates at the kiosk? Okay. Thank you. Okay. With that, we have a motion and Mr. Horner. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, hopefully, Mr. Horner, you can you can hear me okay. I'm having unfortunately I'm having trouble hearing Mr. Horner, and it was very difficult to hear what he said. 
So if I understand correctly, again, what it says in the memo, we're going from res three. Office. To, to office. Yes, That's to great. office. It, 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 any, just out of curiosity, you don't have to, Mr. Horner, by any means. I'm, I'm definitely supportive of this. Um, are you able to tell us, or give us an idea what might go there? Any, yes, Mr. To. Chairman, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. that's a lot better. All right, great. I apologize. Again, Michael Horner for the record, 14502 Dale Mabel Highway. So we are proposing a one-story professional office park. These will be uh, pitched roof, Palladian windows, landscaping, approximately 70,000 square feet. We nice. are purchasing only the upland area of the Swift Mud property. No wetlands are part of this site. We have unified our access, coordinated with the curb cut requirements uh, to Wesley Chapel Boulevard. We have unanimous recommendations for approval. My client is excited to, to build this office park. We think it's a great location. We appreciate your support. Great. Thank you for that, sir. And uh, I will, great project, it sounds like. We definitely need more office in the area, much more than we do other things. So, second, thank you. Okay. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Roll call. Roll call. Roll call vote. It's an ordinance. Oh, it is a roll call. Okay. Roll call vote. District 2, Commissioner Moore. Aye. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Fitzpatrick. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 1, Chairman Oakley. Aye. A motion passed 5-0. Okay. Thank you, board members. All right. Thank you. Um, next. P50. P50. Item P50 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on okay. February 17th, 2021, and by affidavit of certified mailings and site postings. Item P50 is PDD 210211. It's an ordinance amending the Pasco County Comprehensive Plan, providing for a small scale comprehensive plan amendment to the future land use maps, map 2 15 and sheet 16, changing from res 1, residential one dwelling unit per gross acre, to IL, industrial light on approximately five acres of property located on the northwest corner of Old Lakeland Highway and Townsend Road, providing for a repealer, severability, and an effective date. Today's, today's the adoption on this item, so we're asking that you adopt the comprehensive plan amendment uh, by roll call vote, please. Okay. Is there one uh, on email or WebEx to speak to this item? There is no one on WebEx or email on you item. Should have, you should have an applicant, though. Okay, the applicant would like to speak. I'm here, Barbara Wilhite. Can you hear me, commissioners? Yes. 6327 Grand Boulevard, Newport Richie, Florida, 34652 for the applicant. We come to you uh, to change a residential land use to a light industrial land use at this location, which is on Old Lakeland Highway. We come with uh, staff's recommendation of approval and unanimous planning commission recommendation of approval. I would ask that you approve. Okay. Is there any, so there's no one on WebEx, no one on email. Is there anyone at the kiosks? There is nobody at the Date City kiosk. Okay. You've got Newport Ritchie active as well. So. Oh, it's anyone at the kiosks at Newport Ritchie? There's no one at the kiosk in Newport Ritchie. All right, thank you. Move for approval. Second. second. A motion and second by roll call vote. District 2, Commissioner Aye. Moore. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Fitzpatrick. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 1, Chairman Oakley. Aye. Motion passed 5 0. Okay, move on to P51. Item P51 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on December 23rd, 2020. Item P51 is PDD 210179. Um, this item is actually a request to continue to a date uncertain. I believe your there's your agenda might say continue to April 20th, 2021 at 130 in Newport Ritchie. Uh, but since that time, we have spoken to the representative who hopefully is on WebEx today, and he would like to continue the item to a date uncertain so that it can track together with the master plan unit development district adoption when they apply for, um, when the MPUD comes through the public hearing process. And uh, it should be Joel too. Yeah. 
Does the applicant want to speak? Yeah, Mr. Chairman Joel, too. Can you hear me? Uh, can't hear you. We can't hear you. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? There's something wrong with it. Hello. Can you hear me? Uh, we got it now. We got the volume up. We can hear you. you. Yes, uh, Joel to to an associates for the applicant just to confirm that that when you transmitted the plan amendment, we agreed with you that we would hold the final adoption hearing on the plan amendment until the MPD hearing was scheduled to be final so that you would see both of these at the same time. Uh, we're getting close on the MPD, but we do not have hearing dates yet. So that's why this is an indefinite continuance pending the MPUD review. Thank you. All right, thank you. Move to continue. Second. Public comment. Okay. Hmm? Uh, is there any public comment? Any email? There Maybe is no continue? one. Continue. Right. Mm. Go ahead. Okay. There's no one on WebEx and no emails on this item. Is anyone at the Kiox in Dade City? There is nobody at the kiosk in Dade City. Thank you. Kiox in Newport Ritchie. There is no one at the kiosk in Newport Ritchie. Okay, thank you. All right. Back to the board. Would you continue? Second. Got a motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, motion passed five zero. Okay, we move to well, P52 is continuance. P52, P53, and P54 are continuances. You want to give us the, the, uh, proof? the proof on all of them? Mm -hmm. Item P52 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on February 24th, 2021. Item P53 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on February 24th, 2021. And item P54 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on February 24th, 2021. Okay. On item P52, PDD 217509, I do want to read a correction into the record. That should be uh, Commission District 2, not Commission District 5. I did provide a corrected uh, memorandum to the clerk's yes. office. I saw that. Um, so that item, uh, PDD 217509, Connerton Village 3 and 4, MPUD Lenar Homes, LLC. That is a request for continuance to the... April 20th, 2021, Board of County Commissioners meeting at 1.30 in Newport Ritchie. Does the applicant want to speak on this? Uh, Matrix, this is Ms. Clark, uh, Hobby. We, we, uh, we have no objection to the continuance. Okay. Back to the board. Public comment. These, well, if these they do it, if they do it now, they... Okay, so, so yeah. it's advertised continuance. I just want to make sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Just continues. Continues, so. Second. All right, got a motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed 5-0. Yep. Item P53 is PDD 217514 BMI LLC, and that's a continuance request to the May 18th, 2021 Board of County Commissioners meeting at 1.30 in Newport Ritchie. Okay. I have to speak on this. Same applicant or They're, yeah, these are these are all they're all continuances so the agreed upon continuances that are shown on your agenda as continuances. You don't need okay. to take Pleasure comments. of the board. Move to continue. Second. Got a motion and second to continue. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed like sign. Motion passed five zero. P fifty four. EDD 217524 Swift Mud Cypress Ridge Professional Center. This is also a request to continue to May 18th, 2021 at 130 Newport Ritchie. Move to continue. Second. A motion and second to continue. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion passed 5 0. Uh, P55. Item P55 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on March 17th, 2021 and March 24th, 2021. Good afternoon, Joanne Revita, Real Property and Planning. The Real Property and Planning team has received a petition to, pay, to vacate a portion of a platted right-of-way filed by one Lacucci Center. The property is located at the south end of Will Avenue in the town of Lacucci. The petitioner has requested the vacation for the purpose of developing the adjacent properties. There were no objections to this petition and the team recommends approval. Okay. Kevin, 
we have an applicant on this or this? Um, Mr. Mr. Ronnie Deese is, is on WebEx. Can answer questions. Who is? Mr. Ronnie Deese. He's the oh, petitioner. Okay. And the comment is that no comments. I am the petitioner. It, it, He'll answer questions if you've got questions. I think oh, I got you. Right. Okay. Doesn't look like he wants to make a presentation. Does anybody here from the public want to speak? Any WebEx or so email? No public comment from uh, WebEx and no emails on P50. Okay. How about, is there anyone at the uh, kiosk in Dade City? There is nobody at the kiosk in Dade City. All right. Thank you. Uh, how about the kiosk in Newport Ritchie? No one at the kiosk in Newport Ritchie. Well, thank you. Move approval. Second. Second. I got, I got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion passed 5 0. P56. Item P56 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on March 28, 2021. Denise Hernandez, Planning and Development. I, I do have a question for the board. Am I doing a presentation on this item today? Mm. We went, this is a continuous, isn't it? This is, um, we had a discussion on this item on, I believe it was January 12th, and it was continued for 60 days. And I think it was continued at the last board meeting again. Mm. It just, I'm just, Checking. You had it. You this. This is the one. You had a full and complete public hearing. It came back at your last meeting. Commissioner Moore asked for the hearing to be reopened and it be readvertised. In the board has has all the the staff presentation for this one. Unless you were unless for some reason you want to you want to hear it over again. Um, but you had a complete presentation by staff. Uh -huh prior uh, at a prior meeting okay so we don't have to take public hearing or anything you do have to take public you do, do have, have to take, take public, public comment hearing. and my understanding was that the, that uh, i'm the applicant probably wants to make a presentation and i there was additional information that was going that uh i think the commissioner was going to meet with fdot correct um so i'm not sure procedurally how you want to do that, but whatever so the new just, evidence is, you have to give the applicant time to rebut, and you've got to take public comment on whatever the new evidence is for this for this project. Okay, is the board okay with the presentation we received before on this item, or would you like to hear that? I'm okay with it. I'm okay, Mr. Chairman. Don't, we need new information, though, right? Yeah, I. I uh, it was mine. Okay. Yeah, not that You can we can wait for the ap applicant's presentation. I'm fine with that. Right. Well, yeah. we may have questions for you, and happy to I answer we'll them. See what new stuff comes yeah, we'll to us. That we'll come back to you and answer them. Shall I read the item into record just to open it? Please. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. And <laughs> I, need the I think that's what we're asking. So. I did the plug. Oh, you did. Perfect. I did. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> EDD 21 CU 08 P56. It's conditional use Adventist Health System Sunbelt Health Corporation for multiple family dwellings in a C2 general, commer general commercial district. Uh, the item comes to, to you with a recommendation and with ultimate alternative considerations um, to the board uh, and uh, it was approved uh, with conditions, the recommendation of approval with conditions from the planning commission. Um, and that was a 4-1 vote, if I'm not mistaken. Here for any questions. Okay. Th three, two. Three, two, oh. I'll look at the at the agenda memo to verify that. I thought I had four, seen it three, was 4 two one. To Deny. Or two. Okay. Four one. The vote was on. The vote was on uh, we're talking about. Oh, on the continuance. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. No, uh, to make the, sure we're right. Yeah. Staff the uh, uh, the planning commission recommended approval of planning development. Okay. Gotcha. 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 Okay. Sorry about that. Just, no, that's okay. Clarify. That's we're right. on the same page. Yeah, because we didn't vote on it. We, right. We well, continued we, that. Okay, so uh, it's time for the applicant to speak. Hi, this is Barbara Wilhite, 6327 Grand Boulevard, New Florida, 34652. We have our full PowerPoint, which staff has, that we went over before. I have my full team available, Pete Pencil from AVID, as well as our client, um, Aaron Landry from Mass Capital, 
and Steve Henry uh, from Linkson Associates. We're happy to give our presentation again. You have that in your packet. Um, if you would like, I can just hit some high points. I would ask that, that we get a chance to rebut not only public comment, but I think Commissioner Moore has some factual testimony um, based upon a, maybe a meeting with FDOT. Um, we'd like a chance to you know, hear that and also uh, rebut that or discuss it or whatever it may be. I'm not sure what the information is, but we do have Steve Henry um, to participate in any discussion regarding that. So with that, would you like me to proceed with just a high level summary or would you like us to go through our PowerPoint again? High level summary is fine. What? I think it's just a high level summary is fine. Personally. Yeah, high level. Okay. This is the whole presentation. Well, I, can, okay. I, I can do that on behalf of our team and as we get to rebuttal, if we need anything specific from my teammates, um, we can bring them forward to participate, um, including uh, Mr. Henry, if the discussion is going to be transportation related. But okay. at a very high level, Transportation first, the project has no access to Eagleson Boulevard. The project access is on Bruce B. Down, and that project access has been approved by FDOT. As you will recall, the, the project is, the property is currently zoned C2 and can be developed as a matter of right with C2 uses. The traffic generation for this project as multifamily is significantly less than the trips approved uh, for a C2 project. As Mr. Pence explained to you from Avid Engineering during his uh, PowerPoint presentation, which you have uh, in your packet, the staff made sure you had, sure you had, this is not a viable or desired location for C2. It's been zoned since the 80s and is still vacant. The multifamily residents in this location will support the existing older retail at Bruce B. Downs and Wesley Chapel Boulevard, hopefully to revitalize and to continue um, to have that retail uh, viable in that location so it doesn't blight. Also, um, the other thing I wanted to point out was that the board's comp plan has adopted policies about where commercial development should occur at intersections. And this property was zoned in the 80s and does not meet the BOTC locational criteria at intersections. This is the right location for multifamily. Of all the, the things I've heard the county say over all the years about how to do a mixture of uses and how to locate a project, this one meets all of those. This is walkable to existing retail. It's also walkable to the employment at the two car dealerships, which is uh, Lexus and Toyota. It's walkable to employment at Blue Hair and ALS and walkable to the new Baycare Hospital, which is under construction and will open in 2023, which is around the same time as the project. You'll recall that in our PowerPoint presentation, we had letters of support from both um, the ALF, Blue Heron, as well as Baycare. This project is consistent with the mixed use land use designation that this board put on the, po put on the property. It's a, a transitional land use from the commercial to the north, to this multifamily, to the townhomes to the south, and ultimately to the single family detached to the south. It's exactly in line with the board's adopted and very specific mission in its comprehensive plan for this area, which is for high density in compact mixed use locations. The comp plan was adopted to guide development and my client has followed the adopted BOCC policies and this project should be approved. And that is, that's my high level summary. We'll listen to public comment, listen to commissioner, what Mr. Moore had to add, and then we'll come back and provide any rebuttal as necessary. Okay. Matt, is anyone uh, a WebEx or an email to speak? Yes, um, we had two people register, but only one person is on WebEx. Uh, two emails were provided to be read into record. However, one of the emails is provided by the gentleman that's on Web WebEx. So. We can do one or the other, but right. if he's there to speak, we'll let him speak. Take his, yeah, I would take his live testimony. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, um, I'm sorry. Let's have him. Okay. Um, Mr. Mark McBride. If you could state your name and address for the record, I do probably, I need to swear him in. 
Uh, Mark McBride, 4244 Windcrest Drive, Wesley Chapel, Florida, 33544. Thank you, sir. Could you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you, sir. You may proceed. All right. Well, thank you. I um, first wanted to say that, um, you know, I... I believe we have a solution to this potential problem and did try to reach out to several commissioners on this topic and was kind of disappointed I didn't get a call back. But I do think that there is a, a potential middle ground that we can reach here. And the first thing is that, you know, when you look at this property, if you were to face the property, turn southwest and walk a thousand feet, you're gonna find a parcel of land that is zoned for apartments. And that property, we have no problems with being developed and we're not anti apartments. We're just concerned with the oversaturation of apartments. And so we have to kind of ask, why would we change the use of a property when there already is property in the neighborhood that is zoned appropriately for this? And while there has been comments made that this wouldn't be taxing to the schools, we do feel that, you know, when you add um, this apartment building, the apartment building that's zoned, and then the property that's being proposed by Sam's Club, in addition to the already apartment buildings we have in Seven Oaks, the one across the street from Seven Oaks, the one adjacent to Seven Oaks, and the one on the other side of the street of Seven Oaks, then the new ones in Wiregrass Ranch, the new ones down 54 that are under construction, and the new ones that are gonna be built at the Grove, we are highly concerned that there is an oversaturation. We're not against apartments. We would welcome this developer with open arms if they would build it on the property that's already zoned. You know, there was an analogy made against, uh, you know, that apartments use less uh, school desks than houses do. But this is not about houses. This is about office space. And offices use zero school desks. Offices contribute money to the schools in the form of tax dollars and sponsorships for proms and baseball activities, whatever the case might be. And we're going to be missing out on this. There's been some talk about of having affordable housing. There's a misconception that apartments are affordable housing. That's not necessarily the case. Um, some, many apartments in our area have rents higher than that of mortgage payments. You know, I did file a petition uh, online with very little effort. With, within um, days, we had over 500 signatures. It's up to 787. In the past, we had 1,146 signatures on petitions against the oversaturation of apartments. And, um, you know, I just ask that you take this into consideration because this is not from one subdivision. This is from Wesley Chapel. This is from Land Lakes. This is from many different areas in our community. Um, and so, you know, we just really ask that this board take a hard look at the exceptions that are being made, why we're making exceptions when there is already land available for this, and the potential damage that could happen as a result of oversaturation of, of one particular use. And um, that's, that's basically my comments. Okay. Mr. Chair. All right. Uh, Mr. McBride may be under the impression that the petitions he emailed um, would be in the record at, at his request. So um, I just wanna make the board aware that since we took his testimony, we requested that the petitions be part of the record. Oh, the petitions are part of Okay. All right. We'll have to uh, have a motion for that, right? Yes, sir. Move. Second. A motion, second. All those in favor of petitions being a part of the record? Say aye. 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 Ms. Chairman? Aye. Motion quick, passed. Five just to Thank you. Just a quick note for Mr. McBride. Um, I thought we were not supposed to talk to anybody about these hearings. So even when information come over, I didn't make any contact. And I think that's what we're all instructed to do. Well, it, it opened back up. It opened back up. Okay. All right. Well, that's why I didn't, Mr. McBride. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, does anybody you have anybody? Nobody else on WebEx. No one else on WebEx. Let me just double check. Email. Make sure. Yep, no one else on WebEx. I do have one email to read into the record. Okay. I'm going to take the kiosks first in case. Okay. Anybody at the kiosks and dates? 
There is nobody at the kiosk in Dade City. Okay. Anybody at the kiosk in Newport Ritchie? There's no one at the kiosk in Newport Ritchie. All right, thank you. Go back to the email. Okay, these this email is from Miss Leanna Walsh at 3338 Grass Glen Place, Wesley Chapel, Florida, 33544. Dear commissioners, I request that the details from this email be read into the record. On Friday, January 8th, I submitted an email in preparation for the agenda item P85, the proposed rezoning of multifamily dwellings in AC2 General Commercial District on the west side of Bruce B. Downs Boulevard. I stated my reasons why I was against it, but after reviewing the commissioner's meeting on January 12th, I have additional items of concern to point out. Original concerns. One, having 248 units can easily bring 400 plus cars to the area. Two, we are already in a battle with three other redevelopment issues within Seven Oaks. So this is becoming exhausting. We are a master planned community with a way of living that we all bought into. We are not looking for busy roads within our community. Three, we do not have to develop on every single piece of land that we have. Why can't we have some parks, dog parks, and green space for the wildlife? Four, Seven Oaks is one of the most beautiful residential neighborhoods in the area, and I'm extremely disappointed that my property value has not increased as much as it should. We have too many master plan communities with new homes being built that are impacting our wallets. Added concerns. One, if we already have an area that is zoned for potential apartments in Seven Oaks along Interstate 75, we do not need to saturate the Seven Oaks area with more. Two, we are adding the Blue Heron Assisted Living Facility and the Baycare Hospital, which is going to bring more traffic to the area. The intersection at State Road 56 and Brisby Downs is a large congested area. We are going to have people using Ancient Oaks Boulevard to cut through to those facilities. Ancient Oaks Boulevard should not be used by anyone other than someone who lives in Seven Oaks or who is visiting someone in Seven Oaks. It should remain a community road and not a cut through. We already have problems with speeding along the, that stretch of road. As it has been announced that we are going to have speed humps added to the plans for the neighborhood, which is something else I am against. Why do law abiding have to deal with the daily beating of their cars along another issue? Once the library is built, we will be drawing even more traffic from Ancient Oaks Boulevard to Mystic Oaks Boulevard. That area is already too congested with the school. Three. Why do we have portable buildings at Seven Oaks Elementary if we are not at capacity? From what I believe the developer mentioned, we are at 101%. Not sure of the numbers, but we should have a building that can house the students we already have. And if you add the apartments, we are going to be adding more students to the school or we will be looking at rezoning again. Number four, if we allow three four-story buildings to the build to be built in that area, it is going to impact our property values even more than I was originally concerned about. The sample drawings of the buildings look just like the other 10 plus apartment communities that have been built along State Road 54, 56 and outside Livingston Oaks. They leave a lot to be desired from an aesthetic point. I am completely against apartments at any time. That's it. That's that okay. One. All right. Thank you. Um, so we've that's that's the end of the public comment part. Except, do we want to go to discussion for let her rebut or if Commissioner Moore has evidence he wants to put in the record, it's got to be now. It's got to yeah, be so, now. So that's what I was okay, going to recognize, yeah. Mr. Moore, for that. Th no, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I won't talk. I'm not going to talk about anything else because. Everything else will be after the applicant is finished right. rebutting the testimony from um, obviously from the public speakers. Then it comes back to the board. So I just want to make sure procedurally we stay on track so we can have our debate and discussion after that. So I will leave everything else till then. But I did want to, one of my concerns was at the previous meeting where we continue this was um, something I had heard um, potentially from FDOT about a closure of a median in the, in the direct vicinity. So. Um, I see a conceptual site plan here. I don't know if there's a way to zoom in and go a little bit um, more, think about my, uh, be north on Bruce B. Downs. I think that's, uh, there we go, go straight. Okay, there's, pull down to Eagleston. Okay, there's Eagleston. If you keep going to the right a little bit, we may not make it there. Okay, it's not gonna do it. That's okay. All right, if you scroll up a little bit more, the possible, nope, the other way, I'm sorry. Uh, up so the 
there we go. Uh, push up. There, there we go. go. Okay. So at some point, um, FDOT is going to put a traffic signal, as was discussed, at the corner of Eagleston and Bruce B. Downs. Currently, just north of here, on the eastern side of the road, is a shopping plaza. And the shopping plaza has a Sunny's, a Taco Bell, um, has a Publix, and obviously a couple more out parcels and, um, and um, a few other retailers that are attached to the, to the um, Publix. Um, FDOT is going to, right after Eagleston, close the median. What that means is that all the traffic that is going to pull out of the Publix that has to go north will not be able to cross the median anymore to go south. That's going to cause a huge backup, which it currently does already. I see it on a regular basis, past Eagleston. Now, eventually, hopefully, because it's not in the plans and no plans have been submitted, when this happens and the median closes, there's talks, and I've had conversations with FDOT too and the developers across the street, that they could possibly do another ingress, egress out of Publix, but that's going to be a long process. That's not going to be overnight. That's going to be something, obviously, the county's going to have to be involved in, FDOT's going to be involved in, and the developers themselves to build the access, access on the eastern side of the road. So, Mr. Moore. Yes, sir. The median you're talking about, is it right here? It, I wish you could see it, it down the road. It's just north. So we're just not north. looking at the median that they're going to close. Yeah. So eventually, so eventually there's going to be a signal there, but now there's no plan submitted for across the street on the eastern side. Eventually, hopefully, if it's approved by the county and approved approved, uh, approved by FDOT at some point, um, there will hopefully be an ingress egress out of there where those people in the shopping center can leave. Right now, though, they're closing the medium. Shopping center? Uh, I, I can't see that far. The, the, my glasses. the shopping center on the southwest yes. corner? Yeah, so it's, Publix? it's, yeah, it's right here. So if you, no, it would be right there. This, Publix it's, is, yeah, it's uh, right there. Northeast. So anyways, so the median across, uh, the median right there going north is going to, is going to be, um, is going to be closed. So when, and I bring this up because I know some of my, some commissioners and some of the public had talked about the increase in the backups of, tra of traffic at that signal on Bruce B. Downs and Westy Chapel Boulevard. Currently it backs up. It's going to be back up more now because the meeting is going to be closed. And we don't know how long before, again, there's going to be some type of relief. That's going to force people to actually do a U-turn in two spots. They're going to have to do a U-turn at the corner of Bruce B. Downs at 54, which is an impossible U-turn up, in my opinion, to make. I tried it in my truck and I had to do a three-point turn in the middle of an intersection, which is not safe at all. Um, or they're going to have to go around the bend and gang a ride on 54 and do a U-turn on 54 and come back around again. Can you show us where that is on the map? I don't understand where the Publix is. Um, that map doesn't show what we're looking at. <laughs> Break it a little bit. Okay. Cool. okay. I just see empty land. <laughs> I, don't think I see no right shopping. Right I don't know what what this. That, this that, that's Eagleston. That's Eagleston South. You need to go to Eagleston North. This is Steve Henry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that hasn't been developed yet. Yes, in the in the in the in the speaker was correct earlier. Where is there is going to be literally there's entitlements across the street already for apartment complexes on that side. But are they putting the map up? We're waiting. Yeah, I think. I don't know who asked. Andy Taylor, I just want to evade to Commissioner Moore. I have just sent email to uh, Jordan and Todd with I. Yeah, I thought their map would have showed it, but I guess it didn't. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I just got to Google. Yeah, yeah cause... Google Maps. If we can, we can just do that real easy. I can't tell which one of these well, is public. In the meantime, we're waiting for that to come up, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Can I just yes. let me just ask a question because Commissioner Mariano made a point a little while ago that stating that um, the gentleman um, that's pretty much representing Webster Chapel and Landa Lakes and a lot of these apartment issues had reached out and did not receive responses. And now he just mentioned a second ago, his concern was that he thought it was still, he was not able to meet with them. Um, I, I mean, Commissioner Fitzpatrick did, there we go. They, okay, they reached out to you as well. Did you, were you able to meet with, with the community? Or? I don't recall. Yeah, because I think it would be a good idea. I think it'd be a really good idea 
to take the time to actually go and meet with this community and meet with the people that are working on a lot of these issues and spend some time with them before moving forward with something like this for sure. Um, uh, okay, so. Can you zoom in just Yeah, you're, you're right. We need a commissioner. We need to zoom in. <laughs> okay, there it is. There it is. Okay, see, see Eagleston and then see the median. Go, go north a little bit more, if you don't mind. So there's going to there be a light right there. So eventually there's going to be a signal. Okay. Right? But right, and then go a little bit north. Okay, so they're going to close off this median. See, so see where everybody comes out. See where Sunny's, and look at and look south of Sunny's. You see that road, and there's that median where it says Bruce B. Downs, Bruce B. Downs. That's a huge median where all the traffic right now that wants to go back south on Bruce B. Downs comes across a median, goes south. They are closing that. They are literally closing that median right now. Traffic does back up, especially at, at high traffic hours. Yeah. Um, all the way past Eagleston, um, to all the and that um, past Eagleston, all the way up to the corner of 54 and Bruce B Downs. Now that they're going to close that median, all that traffic that was doing going south across that median won't be able to do anymore. They're going to have to go north and do a U turn. If you keep moving up, go north for me more, if you would. Just keep moving north, north, north. They're going to go all the way up there. Keep going a little bit north. And North attempt North right there. And attempt to, yep, and attempt to do a U-turn. Mm -hmm. it, what you can't see too, there's a cement structure, like a barrier, that's kind of in the middle of that intersection too, which makes it very difficult to do. If you go, you can't see it unfortunately. It's in the middle, of the, almost in the middle of the road, <laughs> um, to go around. And all that traffic coming off I-75 right now, what it does, they they go to that right turn lane, so, if, and they and they hang a right on 581. They don't yield, they just keep going. Um, so that makes it very difficult to do a U-turn there as well. So that was something I wanted to bring up because when we talk about, we talked about traffic. So whatever was talked about during the traffic study previously, not gonna be the same. So the applicant talked about a traffic study, they did a traffic study, that was not taken into account because they weren't aware of this closure be, uh, happening um, possibly within eight months to a year now. I'm going to leave it at that for now okay. and then let the applicant go ahead and rebut anything that they feel they want to rebut. And then I will continue on with my okay. other concerns. Ms. Railhop. Thank you, commissioners. Um, regarding schools, it, it came up in a couple, both um, Mr. McBride as well as the uh, Ms. Walsh's uh, email. So I, we do have a slide that's included in our PowerPoint presentation at slide 16 that goes through the school capacity. It quotes Chris Williams testified before the planning commission specifically about the capacity of the school and ultimately okay. concluded that they don't object to this development. And he also thought he also voted in favor of it and said that multifamily right in this location is a good fit. So we did cover that if you have any specific questions. Um, we have more in our PowerPoint on that. I would like to ask Steve Henry to, um, I'd like for Steve Henry, he's knowledgeable, he's met with DOT several times, um, and I think he can add some more explanation regarding this project and, uh, and anything that DOT is doing in the area. Good afternoon, okay. Steve Henry with Links and Associates. So I want to address a, a couple things. One is on the the median closure that uh, Commissioner Moore was talking about and the signal that is proposed at Eagleston. So, um, one, you know, he's correct, the DOT is closing that. Right now, the, the plan is that the signal plans for those improvements are slated to be let in October of this year um, and then um, start construction, you know, the, the first part of 2022. Um, those plans actually, the four Eagles can do accommodate the, um, do accommodate the, uh, um, that best leg of the intersection. Um, and so it, it actually, the signal was designed to accommodate that. We have actually met with DOT to discuss that, and we're looking at the potential to be able to um, 
modify the entrance there to be able to provide that entrance at the same time that they build the signal to provide that connection to the public shopping center so that exactly what you're saying won't happen uh, and that, 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 that we won't have the U-turns that you're concerned with. The second thing is that if you'll go to um, slide 10 of um, our presentation that shows the site plan, the other thing that we're doing, we met with DOT on this project, and the current median opening that is there just south of Eagleston does not meet the DOT spacing criteria. In fact, it's too close to that signal that will be at Eagleston. You'll end up with the same type of problem that you have today with the, the median opening that is between Eagleston and 54. Um, and so what DOT has requested that we do is we move that median opening south, make it a directional median opening that more closely uh, meets the spacing criteria um, and will help from the operation of 581 for the separation between the signal that will be at, at Eagleton. Um, and then finally, um, as shown in our, gra our uh, exhibit 13, of the uh, PowerPoint is it the comparison of the traffic that could be generated by the project as it's zoned today for commercial versus multifamily. And it's a significant difference. It's 376 fewer trips in the AM peak hour, uh, slide 13, um, and 567 in the PM peak hour. So what we're proposing is making the access better, and in addition to that, reducing the potential traffic that may be added to 581 with this project. I'm sorry, can you say that again? Because they were messing with the um, the, the screens. Sure, sorry about that. So th this provides a comparison of the, the daily and, and AM and PM peak hour trip generation between the what could be built on there uh, as far as commercial versus what we're proposing, the multifamily. The daily trips are about 6,400 fewer daily trips, about 376 fewer in the AM peak hour, and about 567 fewer in the PM peak hour. So what we're proposing is a significant decrease in traffic that could be put onto 581 into the area, as opposed to what, what is currently zoned with commercial. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Steve. Mr. Chairman. Oh, just yeah. Is that all of your uh, rebuttal? Oh, wait. Let it me is. ask a question. Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Mr. It's, Byron. Yeah, this would be for the traffic engineer. If you have a office that came in compared to a restaurant, shopping center, how do the trips compare to that? Because that would be an acceptable use as well, correct? Correct. Uh, typically, office would be higher than multi -fate. It's lower, typically, than commercial per square foot, but but overall would still be higher than the multifamily. But it's kind of a, an in between the commercial and the uh, multifamily. Okay. Okay. Um, now, and I have I have a question. Yes. Um. So I want to understand the oversaturation and I want to hear my staff tell me if we are oversaturated on multifamily. Mr. Chairman, oh, so I, I just want to make sure we're done with the rebuttal from the, this is back to the board now. So yeah. if we're asking oh, staff we're, questions, are we, are we done with the rebuttal from the applicant? Or are we back to the commission and staff? Right, they're done. Yes. Oh, are, sure you, are you done, Barbara? That. Sorry. She said, I am. I, I, I think if I, I think if I spoke anymore, I'd just be repeating over and over and over. So um, with that, you know, let's have the board discuss and we're available if you have any questions. You know, as uh, I, I back, well, I still do, but uh, sometimes, you know, when I would drive around and I would see an old a shopping center that wasn't fully leased. And then someone's coming in across the street building a new shopping center. I would say, why are they building a new shopping center when this one is not fully leased? And um, because that's the way our development is allowed to grow. I mean, one has nothing to do with another. 
And so I guess it's important for me to know if, if the area is oversaturated with multifamily. So I believe that that uh, discussion will be had in the future with the Board of County Commissioners as we move through the temporary moratorium um, for a specific geographic um, area. Um, so that's, that's a conversation we will be having in the months to come. We don't have that information. We don't have time. that information. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Moore. Thank you, sir. Uh, Commissioner Mariana brought up a good point a second ago about office too, and, and I think it's just like anything else, it matters how, how large your office building is and how many units you may have if they're separate condo units. You know, that's hy all hypothetical at this time. So um, the size of that property, yeah, it would be great if we had, we talk about all the time, you know, we no longer, and this is since I've been on the board and since 2014, we're trying to go, get away from being a bedroom community. We're, we were done with being the housing source for Hillsborough and Pinellas. Jobs are what's more important now. Mr. McBride, you know, talked about the number of signatures he had, and that wasn't just people around, quote, Seven Oaks. That was Wesley Chapel, if you look at, if you look at it, Lena Lakes, Lutes, that whole area. The community, I've never seen since 2014 uh, this number of people that are concerned, and I'll just be honest with you, fed up, um, than I see now. I mean, they are coming out in droves. It's no secret anymore. Um, I don't think you had one email during this, and maybe you did, I'd be quite amazed, that wasn't from a land use attorney or a developer that said, we need more apartments in the area. You saw, I'm not gonna put it back up and bore you, but you saw the surveys I did, you saw what the, the surveys that, the, that came out with the, uh, this year's citizen survey, what the, the community stated, okay? I get it, listen, and, and I appreciate it, it was what we go through every meeting. They're there to sell us on what they want. That's their job, that's how they make their money, and that's good for, great, that's, this is, you know, it's a, it's a free market and free economy, you're allowed to try to do things. But we don't always have to say yes, by any means. We need to stop this before it gets out of hand. So I, I think everybody received, I received an email from Bill Cronin today talking about recent requests to convert job created entitlements to residential and multifamily. And this is coming from the CEO of the EDC that is speaking out more and more against this spot zoning of apartment complexes on parcels that should be job creating sites to give jobs to our current residents that are here so they do not have to leave Pasco County on a daily basis. And he says, I respect and applaud the recent decision by the Paso County Board of County Commissioners to prevent future con conversions from C2 multifamily. I believe this is another step in the right direction towards ensuring that developers and property owners continue to honor the system of entitlements that are in place. Again, that's the key word. He said entitlements are in place. This is a perfect example of what Mr. McBride actually said of 100 feet across the street already is zoned for multifamily. The opportunity is there. If they want to be close by, go across the street. But we don't have to give up more of our job creating sites. Their opportunity is already given to them right there in this same block. Lily, a chip shot away, Commissioner Mariano. <laughs> um, and he, he will continue to emphasize, this is Mr. Cronin, the need to preserve entitlements needed for job creation, whether it's industrial or commercial, to ensure that our residential development does not outpace job creation in our county. There are still too many people living here or working elsewhere. Our county is not the overflow housing department for Hillsborough and Pinellas counties. We have our own growth strategies in creating more local jobs for our residents as priority. Further, there are plenty of entitlements already granted to fulfill the future housing need. Remember, this is the CEO of the EDC. As a matter of fact, there are multifamily entitlements directly behind this property, which you are discussing today in additional multifamily entitlements directly across the street, which have not been fulfilled. And again, he says, thank you again for your consideration. I mean, we've got thousands of residents that sign a petition. We have the head of the EDC, which says we need to preserve this. This is what, you know, if 10 years down the road, all the great work we're doing gets changed by a further, a, a future commission, we're gonna probably be upset, right? So. A past commission sat here and said, this is what this should be here. Everybody agreed to it. 
let's stick with the plan and not get away from the plan because it's going to work. It will work. But we have to continue to have these job creating sites. Again, I don't want to, you know, I even thought about reading enough 1700 names today of the people. I'm not going to do it because <laughs> we'd be here Chairman. for two hours. Yes, yeah, sir. But it, so I'm going to, I'm going to, Say what I've said on every other quasi-judicial hearing you've had, and that is these aren't a popularity contest. The number of people that are opposed to a project is not something that this board should weigh. It may go towards compatibility. It may go towards other things. But, to, but when you just say there are 1,700 people that are opposed to this project, that's not substantial competent evidence for this board to rely on I, and i understand that at the same time mr steinstein and i appreciate it but i need to let me serve that my fellow commissioners in a district i represent knows what they're saying don't have to, don't take it into consideration that's fine but at the same time i think it's important for them to realize because you know we talk about knowing and i hear it from commissioners and commissioner starkey i mean i think back to you know one of the projects you worked on which is in front of gulf harbors which at one time was zoned and it's going to be built for multifamily and you were the biggest advocate to make that not happen and have the county actually purchase the property which is what's going through proce the process now and that was zoned to be multifamily that was going to be an apartment complex and, 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 I, and i commend you for it but you're one of the biggest advocates to do something else with that property make it a park or something like that versus multifamily so you know, that's, you know, that's a whole different well, it's a, but subject, it's, but, but it's, it's, that's what it was going to be buying it. So we have yeah. a part, but that's what it was going to be at one time. And that's what it was zoned for. Um, so, you know, again, you know, Mr. Steinsteiner, you, you, you brought the point about it doesn't matter how many people I, I mean, I get it. Take the consideration. I think it still matters. But that's just me being elected official in district two and representing the people, but that wouldn't be part of my motion anyways. But, you know, last time I talked about, the application is inconsistent with FO2.3.5.1 of the Land Development Code and Policy Flu 1.8.7. There's a reason, because the applicant failed to demonstrate proposed conditional use for multifamily will contribute more to the county in revenue than it will consume in services, e.g. school, park, library services, relative to the non-residential uses allowed by the existing C2 zoning. They're also inconsistent with 402.3.1. F.1, the Land Development Comprehensive Plan for Generating Uses, because the proposed conditional use for multifamily would consume land and transportation capacity the county must ensure is available for employment generating land uses. Same as what, you know, Mr. Um, Cronin has preached. I, I'm watching numerous uh, planning commission meetings of the number of people when it comes to public safety and it comes to the school board and things that are now speaking out because of this is getting so out of hand. And we also also talk about the um, it'll add it will add more students. I mean, it, it will. It's a fact. It adds more students to an elementary school. That's over. It is over capacity, and that's already stated. Um, so, proposed the multifamily use would adversely affect the quality of life and safety of those students and employees in that area. So, you know, it, 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 we need to preserve our county's alum tax base, preservation of land, transportation capacity for, for employment generating uses. That's what we need to do. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Ms. Um, Patrick. Commissioner Moore, you were mentioning there's entitlements across the street. Do mm -hmm. you know our apartments going to be built anytime soon over there, or are they just entitlements for future? Uh, you know, I, I don't want to assume anything um, ever when that's going to happen. I know there has been discussions, um, but again, those are discussions. Until you see an application, you know, nothing's for real, right? Until you see, I, I, application is reality, but the entitlements are there. They can do it tomorrow, a same with across the street. So the available, the availability to build multifamily is there now. It already is. Okay. And I know the different changes that we're working on um, and staff was working on getting us the map showing the C2 zoning and then a layer of the MF1, twos and threes. And then also a map of where the entitlements are current and future so we're still waiting on that as well we are, we're still waiting on that yep we, don't we still are that. and that's why commissioner for patrick and those are good questions good points you made um you know i don't think it it's it, we would do we're not doing the right thing we're not doing the right thing for the, com the community as a whole the future of the community and future of pasco county especially that area if we continue to move forward with these 
um, today's, you know, today's a perfect opportunity for you to do one of two things. You can say, hey, I would love to take Mr. McBride up on his offer to go see the area and continue this once again or deny it for the reasons I've already given, which I did check with obviously the county attorney's office and each one of those are valid reasons to deny or I would not bring them up. Yeah. So I, will, I will hold off on my motion, but I will make a motion to deny. I'll, I'll wait for a second because I know there's going to be discussion. Yeah. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. You know, one of the quotes that was up on the screen that Chris Williams said, and I don't know what the whole context was, but when it said a comment of multifamily does not impact us as much as residential, assuming it means res, res three. Right. But when you consider about the acres that's out there, 16 acres, you got 248 units coming in from multifamily. Well, if it was res three, you'd have 16, you had 48. That's a bigger difference. And I tend to think that it would probably impact the school even more so if it was going that way. I mean, it's not going res three anyway, but... Right. Commissioner Moore, you brought up another point as far as like, you know, when previous boards, I was probably the previous board member <laughs> yeah. that picked, and, and I tell you, when I ran at the first time, we had like one third the percentage of what Hillsborough County had for mm -hmm. industrial land. And that was a big issue. That's how we're not creating jobs. We don't have any of that. Well, it's hard to create that land because the people don't want to wait for it. You know, if you go down Hayes Road, you see a bunch of residential in there. That was all supposed to be commercial under the Potberg parcels. That all got changed. And once one came in, more came in and more are coming in. So if we've set this along to be commercial and we've set it in where we've set up for apartments, clearly shown in the same grouping right across the street and across the other street, then we've allowed, I think, for the multifamily component. Yeah. I hate to see us give up anything that can be a job creator, no matter what it may be, because if our people can work locally compared to yep. down in Hillsborough Peninsula or somewhere else, it's better. Yep. Quality of life's better, traffic's better, the whole thing is yep. better. And if we set it up that way, at least, you know, unlike Commissioner Stark, he says, if you see one shopping center being built, another one across the street, well, even if it's not leased out, maybe it's still viable because they're still making money to go. That's their decision to go do that. But our decision is how do we want these lands best used? And if I've got an existing area and I've set up apartments for it, why do I want to change for more when I haven't even maxed out what's potentially there? Yep. It doesn't make sense. And it goes against, you say, Commissioner Moore, previous board's decisions about how we wanted to set this up. And I will tell you, if you look at the satisfaction, people are thrilled now that we are moving to get more jobs yep. here. And Bill Cronin, think about it. We've got Bill Cronin, worldwide accepted man who's done so many great things for us. He's not afraid to weigh in on different things, et cetera. He knows he puts the jobs and quality of life. And if we're going to keep a guy around like that, and then I'm, th I'm, and I'm saying he's happy being here, and that tells you that we've, we're doing the right things, we need to still look for creating jobs every step of the way. Yep. This goes against that. Mr. Chairman, just the response yes. the real quick. And you, you brought up a good point about, you know, the retail and the applicant said, you know, about blight and things like, well, there's no blight. I can tell you right now, both those shopping centers are full to capacity. It's difficult. I hear it all the time from people. They cannot find space or land to rent because it's all being taken up. Those places are full. If that one of those storefronts are empty for some reason tomorrow, I guarantee you there's already a lease on it because somebody's about to come back in. You look at all the th things that are happening, even at the Grove over in, you know, Commissioner Oakley's district. So for the longest time, unfortunately, now we have a great group of people that are working on things there. That A lot of that, those sat empty. All those are full now. Oh, yeah. So they're moving out to those areas too because they can't find enough land or availability in this area we're talking about now. So it's very viable. There's not even remotely any blight there. What causes blight is to have this oversaturation of apartment complexes. You saw it happen in Brandon. You saw it. I drove West Shore Boulevard last night, saw the old Georgetown apartments that finally got destroyed, and they finally raised it because after all those years of seeing there for 20-something years because they couldn't fill them up because of all the other ones built there. It's the fact. It's not fiction. It's fact. So I so I, I made a motion. I mean, well, I, let me you. speak here first. So I've, I've been for this project because I felt like it fit in a puzzle. And I, I think that project's good. I'm a little concerned today about the traffic, if that's changing. That, it is. That, that bothers me. Um, and, and I agree. But before us, commissioners before us decided that commercial 
could allow multifamily on those type properties and allow that zone. So I'm I'm not against what they may, but now it's coming to light in, in your area that mm -hmm. there's a change in that feeling and it's and a I think it's a change in this voice. These people bring us that because it's loud. Yeah, we can say no. It's allowed. Yeah, it's, yeah but so. we, and that's why we're a board to say no. Right. And like you and I had a great discussion, you know, a meeting ago, and you said, Commissioner Moore, I see what you're going through and what's happening in your district, and you agreed. So, and I appreciate that. Oh, so yeah. I think this is the perfect opportunity to, you know, let's let's move forward with what we're supposed to be doing, which is job growth in that area. Mr. Chairman, yes. it, it is not a permitted use, but it is a conditional use. Conditional so when, use, yes. When you say allowed, it's back before you for this hearing because they need an additional approval yes. so right exactly yes actually right. not i understand allowed. that correct. thank you for that commissioner miss starkey so um so we said it was commissioners here said it wasn't a good use to be apartments because of the traffic that it would cause and now we're told that if we do office or commercial, it's going to add more traffic. So what happened to that argument? That went out the That's window. That's by the applicant, not staff. So, so um, then, then we're told, you know, I hearing people's comments that this is going to affect their property value is unfactual. Um, and and I agree. You know, the county attorney told us when when you have Lots of people not want, want not wanting something next door because they moved there. They moved to a certain kind of community, and apartments might negatively affect their community miles away. You know, I you really, you know, that's not that's not good policy making when you let that kind of opinion sway you. So, um, what would sway? Now, I don't ever, ever, and I will never swap industrial light for commercial or, or for multifamily. And I think it'd be a rare instance when I would take C2 over multifamily. But my recollection in driving in this area is that it has an awful lot of commercial in the area. And I would say, is it saturated with commercial? So um, it seems to me that that developed that it's now got a Bell's. When I look here, it says it's a Bell's outlet. You know, when you get that kind of stuff, it's because you're getting what six dollars a foot or seven dollars a foot. So that, that that means there's too much commercial, and you're getting the low end of the market for retail there. So I would hope that someone would come in and redevelop that, but I. My recollection of State Road 54 and the top part of Wesley Chapel Boulevard is there's an awful lot of commercial around there. I am hoping to take 19, which is has way too much commercial, way too much, and get some of that out and put multifamily in it. Um, so when I look at this site and the hospitals coming in, you got all these job opportunities right behind there. I was trying to find the, I thought I took a picture of it. Um, but I, I was looking at a report that came out from someone, and I wish I had saved it. I thought it said that Hillsborough County had 550,000 apartment units, and Pasco County had 15,000. That is not oversaturation. So um, I look at this location. I think it's a good location for multifamily. It's right near the highway. It's right near the malls. I, I don't have a problem with it until someone can tell me that area is oversaturated. We, I'm okay with this one. For sure. Um, I do okay. want to see know, those We know you're numbers, for apartments. We know you're for apartments. That's, you're, you're that's, you, that's where I am with this one. We know you're, we, and listen, I, I appreciate your opinion. We know you're, that's a, my ab, opinion. you're an advocate for apartments. It everybody depends knows, on where. Everybody in the community wears, it's a badge you wear, kind of like a NASCAR driver wears a patch with a sponsor on it. It's very similar. So, you know, I, I get it. And that's, I, I, I kind of resent what you're saying. No, you said a I, you said I am. I am. It depends on where they me. are. You and if it. there is an over, excuse me, let me speak. You're being really rude. Oh, God. If there is an oversaturation, I want someone to tell me because yeah. I don't think an oversaturation of anything is good. But no one has told me and shown me that there is here. 
So, Chairman, right. yes, I've so got a, um, can I have a motion on the floor, and I do not have a second. Oh, yes, you do. Okay. I second it. And Mariana. What was the motion? Yeah, thank you. And, All right, so if I could. No, you know, because I wanted to, I, at one point, I just want to talk about the retail that Commissioner Starkey talked about, the Bell's Outlet, and calling that low rent or whatever her statement was, because it's not people should be able to afford, you know, not everybody can afford going and buying a fifty a hundred dollar shirt you got to give everybody the opportunity and some people don't prefer not to buy that 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 bells has been there for a gazillion years they've made so many investments in that and like i said before it's it, it's full there's not enough space there it's full they refurbished that whole place painted it new stucco they're selling out parcels they're like crazy now because people want them okay. so it's okay. it's not that it's low anything i mean okay. give people an opportunity to have choices if they want to buy a, a thousand dollar suit or go to bell's outlet and buy a 50 dollar suit i mean it, it's not bad it's good it gives people options yeah. mr chairman horses so, if, so to, to, to even touch on bells and bells outlet i mean down at 54 they've got a, what bells and a bells outlet the same mall and i happened to walk in the other day looking for some things and i mean bells outlet was immaculate i mean not not low end at all probably less money than maybe what bells might have been but not not a bad thing for a retail to t to talk about apartments et cetera. now you've heard me say if i can get apartments on 19 i'm not against it okay i'd, I'd much rather see single family I'd much rather see condos that's gone on <coughs> the demographics have changed dramatically that's why you see the over saturation of retail and commercial on 19 because you used to have people coming down from the midwest let's say or even new york they bought these homes they had great income they bought homes for real cheap money they had tremendous disposable income in the past 10, 15 years, that's changed dramatically. Those two-bedroom ha homes, those small three-bedroom homes, are now filled in with renters. I mean, we have tremendous rental coverage out there. You don't have the same demographics anymore to go to support. That's why the Gulfview Mall has gone down so bad, because they can't support it. That's why it's down the 54 corridor. So Commissioner Moore brings up a good apartment, a, a, point, uh, a <laughs> point about apartments that when they depreciate down over time, just like single-family housing that's real cheap, guess what? What fills back in there may not be what you want. I think that this board set up, well, from the previous boards, that when they set up these land uses, et cetera, and the zonings are in place, they put in for apartments to be in there. Now, back to the same point again. We put in for apartments. If you're not filling up what you've got for apartments already, why would I approve more? And the reason this conditional use is in there, it gives us more flexibility because if we don't like something, we get a lot more flexibility to say no than something just coming in. And as long as we're following the code, et cetera, if my feeling is, if I've got apartments that aren't even being filled in now, why am I going to approve any more? It doesn't benefit us, and we're not trying to create jobs with apartments. We need to focus, keep our commercial as pure as it can be, especially right now. So, um, and I want to say one more thing. Uh, so, I was approached by um, a, a landowner and a real estate attorney, I won't say which one, about would I be amenable to having some landowners come together at Gun Highway in 54 uh, in that area on the southwest corner um, that does have some zoning. It's, it's kind of all messed up uh, with some higher density zoning. If they pulled their property together, would I be amenable, amenable to a multifamily at that spot? And I said, absolutely not. That's for the flea market. Right? Absolutely not. That the flea market's there. There's there's something else coming in. But that land is much better suited for light industrial. And we want jobs in this county. So I think it's really inappropriate for you to say what you did. As what did I my say? view is okay. to say is to look at each site on its own. Does it make sense for multifamily to be next to the interstate? And State Road 56, to me, yes. So I don't think it's uh, that's that's a, I guess that's more of a excuse me. I guess that's more of a planning perspective. Um, there okay. there are sites that are good. There are sites that aren't good. So I, you you characterized me in a way that I think was improper, and and no, not no. correct. So you said you said it, not me. No, it you, said right. it. you said you wore the badge. That's fine. Got, uh, I, I don't wear any Cameron, badges. You said, you said I wear it with We've a badge. We've got question. Not. Call the question because you got a motion and you got a second to deny this project. Mr. Chairman. If I can, if I can just get clarification of the commissioner's motion. Okay. That, that is the, the motion for denial you're making is the same motion 
you've referenced some of the detail yep. you made the last time, but it's the same motion that you yep. made. And the I can last submit time. to the I can submit for the record as well. Thank like. you. Would these apartments be coming in at the same time before or after the hospital that they were planning on putting in down below? South. Is it roll call? Is it or is it? Well, I don't know. Okay, Commissioner Fitzpatrick. I think remember last time. You know, I I, I brought actual facts about the number of healthcare workers that live in the area. About 2000. And there's plenty of healthcare workers by far in the area. My wife's a registered nurse. When there's a shortage, she gets mailers and postcards below galore about needing nurses. I haven't seen one in I, I months and I'm the one that gets the mail. Years probably. Used to boom boom boom. We don't even see them anymore. There's hey. there's no shortage of nurses and physicians i mean in that area by any means okay i got a motion a second to deny this project all those in favor say aye aye, aye. all opposed nay. like sign nay. or nay 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 the motion um passes no no, no. Said you got to make a new motion there are three but it's it's the vote is two for denying this project and no she's three for you were in yay to what? deny it. Do Mr. Chairman, yes. Mr. Chairman it, okay. while this is unusual, why don't you do a roll call vote? That's, that's what, what I was motion? thinking earlier. So, yeah. The motion roll to deny. Call vote. Motion to deny. Motion is to deny. District 2, Commissioner Moore. Aye. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Nay. District 4, Commissioner Fitzpatrick. Nay. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 1, Chairman Oakley. Nay. All right. So now we uh, we need a motion approving it. Yes. Okay. I understand. We have to have a motion you approving have to have the, the motion project. To you approve it if you oh. want this, if you want okay. Project uh, motion approved. to approve the project. Move staff. Rec you're moving staff recommendation. Moving Correct. staff recommendation. Second. Okay. Got a motion second. By roll call vote. District 2, Commissioner Moore. Nay. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Fitzpatrick. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Nay. District 1, Chairman Oakley. Aye. Motion passed 3 2. Okay. Now we move on to our, that ends the public hearings, and then we move on to R45. Is that right? Okay. Okay. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair, before Ainsley, I'm sorry, Ainsley Bransford gets started, I knew it was you. <laughs> You've already gone. You've seen most of this information before in some briefings that we gave to the board, so it really isn't necessarily a lot of new information, but we wanted to kind of walk through the different options for the the way to the do local, well, local road paving program based on the last meeting, since we kind of already had this teed up. It just made sense to bring it back since it looked like we were going to have some time today. What we're really looking for when, when Bramford is done, that uh, direction of which option you would like us to pursue further and do more research on and bring you, you know, a little more detail on them. Because so, right now we don't necessarily have all the answers for you to make one final decision. But what we're looking for really is a go go look at this one, this option and this option, and maybe another option to go do more research on and then bring it back to us. So that's really what we're looking for today. So with that, I will turn it over to Branford and let him go through it. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Um, Branford Adumwa, Public Works Director. Um, and if we can, can we pull it up on the screen? Yes, Jordan. Okay, as um, the county administrator mentioned now uh, this is about the paving of um, local roads the program that we have uh, which we all call PVAS so the issue here is um, we are offering options for discussions uh, in terms of uh, the pavement assessment program PVAS uh, which uh, is currently administratively burdensome and also very costly on a life cycle basis the goal here is to come up with an option that is going to provide us, is going to help reduce the administrative cost, um, as well as um, provide um, a sound road for the citizens of Pasco. Next. 
So before we get into the presentation, and I know I have 15 minutes, so I'm going to go quickly. So I would like to talk about a strategy called Road uh, Preservation Strategy, which we don't currently do under the present program. What that means is uh, preservation is a program, maintenance program you apply to a road after you've paved the road over several years. It extends the life of the road. So a road that would normally last under the current program, say 18 years, can last 40 years. The preservation strategies are very cost effective. And um, currently, when the road is paved, if you take a look at the chart to the left, uh, the condition comes close to the 100, never 100, uh, sometime 94, 93. Uh, the current program, then nothing is done to the road. And then the road keeps deteriorating. Uh, and then 18 years, we are back to the same place. Similarly, you can compare this to your car. You buy your new car, you don't change the oil, you don't change the filter, you keep driving it. We all know what happens. Um, if you look on the chart to the right, it shows what should be done. You know, where you have excellent, you have a new road, uh, you keep applying those strategies I talk about on the left um, side of the, um, of, the, um, of the slide. What is called rejuvenation within five years you apply it is very cost effective. Uh, and then you come to microsurfacing, and then you do mill and pave, and you can keep going for at least 30 to 40 years, just not spending a whole lot of money reconstructing the road. Okay. Next slide, please. Excuse me for a second? Yes. Go back to that slide. On the right screen, it says, eliminate or delay spending 6 to $10 on rehab. What does that mean exactly? Yes. What that means is, if you apply the preservation uh, strategies we mentioned, which we currently don't do, which on the other options we are going to present would allow us to do, is you are going to not spend six to 10 times the amount that we are spending now on roads. Depending on the timing, depending on the condition of your roads now, if you apply it at the right strategy, at the right point of the road, the savings can, in terms of the uh, expenditure, can be six to 10 times less. As of, of maintenance. Yes. As maintenance prolongs the quality of the road. Exactly. The preservation is the maintenance. It prolongs just like your car. You know? Okay, I got you. Next. Okay. So this is, this is, and the previous slide, the six to 10, we were modest, very modest in that, in this. And what we found out from our data, the current process, if you look at the one in red, is called FDR, uh, full depth reclamation or reconstruction. With the current program, PVAS program, that is mostly what we've been doing because keep, keep in mind, a road is built, you know, we can't fix it until there's a petition. Uh, if the petition uh, passes, then we fix it. Uh, so we are spending close to that amount uh, on the average uh, in the current program. If you take a look at the, um, the uh, chart on the left, it shows if we apply these strategies that we are talking about, uh, the cost savings could, could be about 65% to the citizens and also to the county. Next slide, please. So we are offering now uh, five options. Actually, the first option is the existing system PVAS. Uh, the second option is what we call PVAS Plus. It's a very fancy name we came up with. Uh, and then option three is the countywide done at valorem assessment, uh, which is different from uh, the at valorem uh, taxes that we currently have. Option four is the countywide at valorem taxation. Um, and then the last one in the M MSTU, which is also a form of taxing unit, but then we are able to exclude certain areas of the county uh, and, then, and then tax them. And in this case, we'll have control in terms of uh, when the rules should be paved. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Another question. Bradford, sometimes we have neighborhoods privately held like Seven Oaks. They'll go in and they'll um, seal coat their whole asphalt. What's the difference from that to the microservicing? And have you built that into your plan? Yes. The seal coat that they do is what is called surface rejuvenation. So what they are doing, what they call seal coat, is okay. service rejuvenation. Okay. Uh, it's different from slurry seal, which is not good. Mm -hmm. But seal coat is a service rejuvenation. In the first five, seven years, if 
if you just pour that on the road, mm -hmm. it just brings it back to life. It rejuvenates the content of the asphalt and just extends it for another five years. I mean, what about if you get a road, like the road I'm on is probably 15 years old. There's a couple of little hairline cracks in it, but pretty much it's not in bad shape, but it's rough. Yes. And to me, like that would be a good seal coat. Yes. Would you switch would you look at seal coat in that or would you do the microsurface? Instead? You do a microsurfacing. So as long as, as long as you see the cracks appearing, mm -hmm. it's past the seal coat. Okay. So therefore you need to do microsurfacing. Uh, the more cracks, that means you need to do mill and pave. Mm -hmm. So as soon as the microsurfacing, as soon as the cracks start appearing, then you do the microsurfacing. Yeah. How does the cost compare to, let's say, microsurfacing compared to repaving percentage-wise? It's like 10%, 15%, 20%. Oh, okay, so, so I can, um, looking at it, uh, microsurfacing really is about like $35,000 per lima. Compared to? Compared to if we are doing FDR, it's about $500,000 per lima. Get FDR, just regular mill and surface. Regular mill service, you are looking at hundred and roughly $150,000. About a fifth. Yes, it's about probably five times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and if you um, if you're gonna seal coat, you'd rather do that in like year six, seven, or eight. Yes, roughly. Because you are trying to bring the asphalt back to life again. Asphalt, after many years, mm -hmm. because of the sun and the environment, mm -hmm. the elasticity of the asphalt goes away, then leads to cracks. Uh, so you want to just rejuvenate the surface again and, so and put, then it gives it an additional five years three to five years so if you put the micro servicing down it's going to cover the crack and it's not going to buckle under it later on yes actually in the micro servicing before you do that you seal the cracks seal the crack first okay uh, so that is why you don't want to wait till too many cracks then yep. it's past the micro servicing then you need to do mill and pave okay all right thank you all right next slide please okay so um I'm not going to go through the current process of PVA since we all know what it is. Um, but if you look at some of the pros and cons, and we've provided this on all the options. On the left, the current process, property owners determine when a road should be paved. Okay, they, um, keep in mind the failure rate for petition is 70%. Or the commission decides to do a false assessment or uh, board initiated assessment. Uh, on the right, um, we tested the whole roads, local roads in the county and all that. We spent money doing that, so we have information on the data. Um, that the, the, uh, what we call the staff, we don't make that decision to, um, to pave the road. The road is being made by residents who, in terms of when a road should be paved, they want to pave it when it's really, really bad. And even that, uh, the failure rate is 70%. Wow. Uh, the second thing is the administrative cost is very high. Uh, the, uh, the ballots that are sent out, mail, mails are sent out, there are workshops, there are public meetings, there are HOA meetings, there are BCC meetings. Uh, on the other options, you wouldn't have all that. So administrative cost is very high. Also high maintenance costs. Because when we fix a road, then we don't do anything until the portal starts coming up. It's very frustrating to you know, residents to see uh, roads that are beyond portal patching and to also the staff who are back there portal patching roads, spending a lot of money for roads that really are beyond portal patching and they need to be reconstructed. Also, the PFAS program is funded by what we call a seed money. So we have some seed money in there that funds the program is very limited and as people pay back, then we use that money, uh, just like it's like a revolving you know, uh, loan. Um, it's very limited, you know, the program is growing, people are, you know, roads are being paved, up, but the money is not sufficient. Um, also, when you talk to many uh, residents, when I'm out there, uh, they say, well, I already pay my property taxes, why are you assessing me all this money? So that is a very big con for this particular program. Next slide, please. So option two is what we call PVAS plus, and it's just a combination of the current PVAS, so you don't get rid of the current PVAS, but what it's saying is the program that I was talking about, current program, we pave the road, then we don't do anything else. This is gonna allow us, once the road is PVAS, then we come in there 
and then uh, we are able to do the sort of thing I'm talking about, the road preservation. Um, and then uh, that extends the life of the road. And we are saying all roads, if this program is what is adopted, all roads that are PVAS, have been PVAS in the past five, past five years, qualify. And also any new road that comes into the program, like new subdivision roads. This means that uh, residents will be um, assessed an additional money, you know, uh, to come up with this new preservation program, which is going to save a whole lot of money compared to how it's currently being done. Uh, and then the last thing is um, we will have to modify the current special assessment ordinance to be able to do that. Next slide, please. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question real quick? Yes. And I'm a little behind on it, but I want because I want to let you finish. That's <laughs> okay. The next thing. Um, are you familiar with the HA5 sealer? HA5, uh, I'm not very familiar with that. HA5. You're not familiar with it? Maybe look into it. Something that's supposed to lock the road in time. So instead of adding additional layer, that roads off, preserves it, and helps stop water. Again. Yes. Yeah. So, so that is that is probably service rejuvenation uh, because they have different names for different types that are out there. So, so surface rejuvenation is a general term for 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 the um, for the type of products that are out there. Yeah, I think it's ma mainly designed for yeah, again local neighborhood roads and things, not major yes. highways, right? Yes, correct. Okay. For high traffic road, no. Something you've looked into or, or thought about? I don't know. If, I think maybe is it more cost effective? Very cost effective. Okay. Okay. Surface rejuvenation is very, very cost effective. Pelema. Okay. Okay. This so one, I don't know if that's something you could be thought about to save money. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, having the current uh, PVAS, if we, uh, the option of PVAS plus, that means the current PVAS stays. But what is going to do, the difference between this and option one is um, eventually over the long run, if we keep you know, uh, doing the PVAS and then applying these strategies, the cost of the roads are going to decrease in terms of road uh, mainte uh, maintenance uh, because it's extending the life of the road. Um, and also, you know, we, the county is applying the strategies. There's control uh, by public work staff to be able to determine based upon data uh, what we need to do to roads that have been PVAS. The other pro is that the administrative burden is going to go down uh, and um, as roads gain the benefits of preservation strategies, that you see that there wouldn't be too many roads, PVAS roads coming before the board for approval because their lives are being extended. Obviously, when you apply these preservation strategies, uh, you wouldn't see a portal in a long time. Uh, they are not going to appear. The cons about that is that there's, um, there's going to be a slightly higher direct cost uh, to property owners because there's going to be an additional, not as much as what is being charged now for PVAS, but there's going to be probably some, I'll say about 30%, 20% of what is being paid to have to implement the new program. And the cons is that the residents are not going to be in the position to determine when their road needs to be um, uh, to be maintained uh, based upon doing this um, uh, preservation strategy. Yeah, there's, there's a note there that says that um, Jeff's department is to take a look at that later on, <laughs> the legal vetting. There's a caveat out there. <laughs> because the county attorney isn't particularly happy with this option. Okay. <laughs> and and I why? hear you. <laughs> why? And just... because, because as it's been described, I don't think it's legal. Oh. The... the you can't justify a special assessment based on a flat fee in outgoing years. There's a way to do this, but like it says, it, they, this one is still being vetted. To, I think what to get to where staff wants to be with this one, you'd have to create MSBUs for each neighborhood that you did a PFAS for. Oh. And then on a yearly basis, the maintenance could be specially assessed for that subdivision. Okay. Once you start doing flat Not fees, once you're doing, well, once you're doing flat fees, this is tax. And okay. so it'll be struck down as an illegal tax. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. 
So part of the struggle that I would see as well is when I think of, I'll just bring up Seven Oaks again, they maintain their roads, they go through. How do you put them in a group other than a separate MSBU from them, or would they just maintain their own roads? So the county attorney's favorite option is <laughs> the last one that Branford will present to you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, look at go yeah. through. Is there some so, pressure? <laughs> right, yeah, on. so... Yeah, let me go ahead and uh, he's right. I want to brought the legal vetting up. Now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, ne oh, next slide. I know. It's a... All right. All right. Uh, so, so uh, again, this is just discussions, and then we can come up with the details. Option three is the countywide non ad valorem assessment. Uh, this is just something like the P valves, but over all the county. But then the county has control of when the road needs to be paved, and we are able to apply the maintenance strategies, the preservation strategies that I talked to. So everybody uh, is going to be, um, um, be, 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 be involved in this. It's based upon trade generation. So that means businesses will have to contribute to that. Um, and then we'll have to come up with a new special assessment if we decide to do that to really uh, implement that. Uh, next slide. That's the county attorney's least favorite option. Just, yes. just letting you know. Yeah, yes. I, think, I think this one is least this favorite. One, yeah. oh, I have um, the pros here is that, again, you know, uh, uh, we are able to apply the preservation strategies I talked about for all the roads. Um, funding uh, is not going to be an issue, uh, as it is sometimes for the PVAS because of the seed money. Uh, administrative uh, burden, uh, there wouldn't be all the... Um, mailing ballots and workshops and everything else. Um, also, there's going to be reduced cost um, over many years because you are not going to be seeing a whole lot of portal in a long time. Um, and then uh, this is going to allow us to address the dead roads uh, that you know are always a big thing for, for everybody. Now, the uh, cons is, is, is similar to the last um, slide, you know, that um, um, now property owners are not going to be making a decision anymore as to when the road should be paved. Uh, and um, uh, the thing about this is that uh, businesses may not, you know, like that because, you know, then, um, and also businesses may not like that. And also the CDDs and the private communities um, are going to be, maybe may, they may take a look at their assessment in a different way, even though they could be excluded on this one. Okay, so there could be some possessions, possessions out there. Next slide, option four. All right, as opposed to the first uh, option three, this is uh, at Valorum taxation. Uh, again, <clears throat> this is going to be um, what we have for at Valorum taxation, but for it, it's for fixing local roads residential rules, and there will have to be a new ordinance um, that uh, we'll have to put in place if this option is selected. Next slide. Pros and cons are similar pros, life cycle, uh, road life cycle cost, you know, is gonna be lowered because of the preservation we talked about. Uh, we're gonna have funds to get this implemented. Uh, administrative burden is gonna go down. Uh, maintenance cost is going to go down uh, because we wouldn't be out there patching potholes everywhere. Um, also, we'll be able to address the dead roads. Uh, and also, the cons are similar to the last slide. Next slide. Option five. Option five is what we call MSTU. And this is uh, <clears throat> what we're going to be doing on this is also taxes, but then we should be able to exclude uh, the CDDs and the other um, communities that maintain their own local roads. Uh, a new ordinance will have to be put in place to have that done. So you could draw, to answer your question, that's why I said this was, this was the way that you could do what you were asking to do. You can exclude the cities, you can exclude those CDDs that are already doing their own road maintenance, and you can exclude private roads that are doing their own road subdivisions with private roads that are doing their own maintenance in on in with an MSTU. So the ad valorem, the non ad valorem, we could not exclude CDDs. Number three, the the non ad valorem county. Find, do I have a copy of this? A hard copy? I don't see one in any of my stuff. Did we get a copy of this? Just so I could not ask you this question. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, the option three, I think, which is which is the countywide non ad valorem assessment. I think, as I said, is my least favorite. I think it's dead on arrival. I don't think there's a way I can fix it to make it legal. Oh, okay. On this one here, now this, um, you can exclude cities, you exclude uh, CDDs. CD, mm -hmm. CD, let me, because uh, there are a bunch of CDDs that are not doing their own road maintenance. Yep. They wouldn't be, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be, be a part of that. They wouldn't be excluded. They'd be taxed. Those that have been done in the last three years, let's say, that are doing their own road maintenance and especially assessing their residents for that road maintenance would. Right. What was, what does this do to the people that have just, say they've just had a PVAS and they've got their road? What would it do to those areas? It would, can, it would take it from where their road currently is now and they would get the um, upkeep that that Brantford has has talked about. They they would they would get sealing when sealing is not, is due. They would get microsurfacing when it is due. Oh, for they, future of a of a PVAS road, right? As yes. Say it's just done. So this will actually collect money that will take care of the future for their road. Yes. So they don't have to pay any more in. Exactly. Right. Mr. Chairman. Okay. Yes. Um. I know. Okay, so the first one was the regular PVAS. Um, the PVAS plus was basically you get the initial fee and then there's an extra, t I'm going to make up a number $10 on top of that a month. Um, we're not talking about three. The millage rate would just be a flat fee for every everyone, but then we can include the CDDs and homeowners. For the millage rate. But that would be flat, and then so, CDDs would get so that. So in, in number two, there'd be no millage rate. No. I'm talking about number four. Number where four. Where's the millage rate? Oh. I kind of went through all of them. Yes, it would, be in your, it would be in your general budget. You would fund transportation in your general budget. But now are we including the CDs? Are we including the that homeowners would, in that one? Yeah, that, that's the... It, the way four is characterized, it would be for everyone. For everyone. Regardless if they pave their own roads. Okay. Right. So then five, I was trying to figure that one out. So basically, five is like for, five is like you currently do fire. It ha, it is not the entire county, but it is most of the county. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically you can pay X amount for 10 years or you can pay X amount for 40 years, but indirectly it's the same amount over the 40 years that you're gonna be paying anyway, except one spread out and one's in a lump sum. Well, as Branford said in the beginning of his presentation, the hope is that we, if they are paying it every year, their roads will last longer and so the chunk of change is not going to be as large for them if you get it in time. The, nothing's going to help the, the, the ones that have roads that, are, that have disintegrated now. There's, somebody's got to pay for that to be mm -hmm. made whole. Mm -hmm. And then the PS. But at the, point, what, at the point that the road is made whole, we can make it last longer. Exactly. So, yes. Mr. Chairman? Wait a minute. Ms. Starkey, you oh. raise your hand. So um, I did on on um, looking. I, so I'm looking at option three, non ad valorem assessment. But I know the attorney says we're not doing that one. So, um, <laughs> but, uh, but you can't do it. So, and this is kind of confusing the way I'm trying to compare them. I okay, let me just back up and say, I think we need to do something. I don't like the PBAS program. I think, and, and I really don't like it now that I see that. 70% of them fail. So 70% of the time we're wasting staff's time in our time. And that's not a good, that's not a good plan. Um, so uh, that's why I, I pretty much for board, board, board initiated, board issued, because if the, if, the, if someone in the neighborhood is trying to get the road fixed, 
It's because the road needs to be fixed. Bramford, how much how much oh, will the money wait, be wait, charged? But, but, here, but here's my question. On when we when, on some of them, there's commercial commercial are assessed, right? But um, commercial is normally on a collect well, it's on a collector or arterial road. So in so by assessing commercial and again, I don't know if it's again, but they'll be helping to pay for the neighborhood roads. Is that what the, happens? Yes, the whole idea for you know for actually for options four, um, five, four, and four or three. five. Yeah, you know it's going to be everybody in the county, um, and so you know yes, they will paying for the local road. The whole idea is because of the impact of the businesses on the local roads. Okay. But they'll that'll, pay. Be the, that'll be the methodology behind it, uh, tree generation. Have you put a number on it to what you would need to collect over the county if you did number five? Yes, I, I don't, we don't have the number in uh, here okay. yet. The hope is that you can direct us. We can go back and bring back the yeah. numbers. Because of all of them, I like number five better because the problem with PDAS is nobody wants to pay for the road. Right. Right. To begin with. Yeah. So if they're paying a lesser amount in, then that's good. Yeah, so, Mr. Chair, the, the reason we don't have really an answer on number five is we would need to go in and exclude every right. CDD or other housing group that maintains their own road, right? Because you those would be excluded. And so that's not a you know a, a three hour GIS operation. We wanted to kind of get some more direction before we had somebody actually dive into that because that's going to be a pretty intensive project for somebody to dive into that because, you know, a CDD that maintains their own road shouldn't be part of, you know, op well, op what option five would be. If you if you want to include a CDD that maintains their own road or an HOA that maintains private roads, then option four would be the way you'd want to go. But, right. you know, I, as I, I'm kind of in line with you know, the county attorney, option five is probably the one that sounds like it makes the most sense. Yeah, it does to me. Number one, they don't want, um, number one, they don't want to pay PVAS, so that doesn't work. Number two, they don't, still don't want to pay PVAS. So, I mean, and then you get number three and you can't do that one. So, you go to number four, I like five over four because I think it makes it fair for everybody that's going to be preparing their roads in the future. And Mr. Chairman? Yes. What about the people that just have yeah. paid all that money for their current PVASs? Yeah, they may be upkeeping it, but I know with the PVAS Plus, when you originally presented this to me, the PVAS Plus, you still had to do the original paving assessment and the original PVAS and then still pay an additional so much every single month yes, or every year. For the future. Yeah. Yes. Right. Now, if five option five is picked up, uh, the, the 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 communities that road will be asset that will be taxed are the ones that road the roads are in the bad condition. If your road has already been PVAS and it's in a good condition, I think it's going to be a while before you come under option option five. Okay, so so if you just Mariano. had the roads PVAS, then the, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> you know, you bring, you're bringing up a good point. Someone who's right now paying for one that just got done. It's five years before it even gets done to it. To come along and that that road's going to last a long time the other the other flip side of that too is what about the person on a dirt road all of a sudden i'm just going to pay this x amount of dollars to do it and i'm going to get a road paved that doesn't sound like it's going to be fair either because that can eat up a whole bunch of money real quick to keep a shortfall maybe so they have to a, wait a long time before they get to the but road. they'll exactly. have to be scheduled so, in Yes. So, so, so it won't be all paved at one time all dirt. So I'll, I'll like to mention that we, you know, um, we. We tested all the roads in Pasco County, arterials, collectors, and local roads. We have a very good data. We have a good, very good paving management system uh, with a lot of algorithms in there that can decide objectively what road needs to be paved, you know, whether it's dead road or so. So in wherever this program has been implemented, uh, a paving management system you know, is used to help make that decision. Uh, so we are not going out today paving all dead roads. Um, and so. They're going to come in at the right time that, you know, I mean, there wouldn't be a whole lot of impact on the other programs. Bradford, I think if you had everybody with a dirt road coming in in one time and you looked at what that number would be, it would be a phenomenal number. Somehow you get to break out those dirt roads. So they're going to pay an upfront number as well as this regular thing. Otherwise, you're going to bankrupt the program. But here's, here's the other thing too, Jack. You got to remember, you, 
you've got citizens all over the county, so you can't do all my dirt roads right. and you get none paved. So it had to go in districts and do them along. So everybody it makes everybody happy, but eventually you get to them, but it oh. takes time. So, I, 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 I think you, Commissioner, you bring up a great point because this isn't an easy program to unwind. Right, because as you point out, those that have just had their road paved and they're paving, paying out PVAS for the next ten years, how do you how do you treat them? Right, that's got to be part of whatever solution we come up with. That has to be part of the answer. In addition to the dirt road issue, you know, right now on the fire MSTU, the undeveloped property isn't part of the MSTU. Right, we don't we don't the MSTU doesn't match the county boundary. So somehow you have so, to have a forgiveness. Because you just paid for uh, road and paid for it. So there's got a period of time. If you forgive it and then start it, say the road's good for eight years or 10 years, you forgive them because they just got a PVAS done. They paid for it and started right. at that time when it comes, you know, prior to it being ready for maintenance. So, so you have money for it. So I guess I don't, I don't think I've heard from everybody, but I, I, I think what i'm kind of hearing is kind of coalescing on around a way to try to make option five work but we got to look at how do we treat the current people that are current paying pvas or recently have been paying pvas how do you deal with the dirt roads right so there are still other options we got to figure out as part of it but that's kind of why we want to have the discussion today because now we can go back and research those right you know there's public a, works a gis county attorney's office and figure out what that looks like and then bring you back something that's a little more baked if you will because right now we're there are a lot of issues in there you just can't move from one to the other without unwinding some existing stuff today yeah. let, me, let me let me throw this idea you've heard you've heard me talk along us 19 come up and down you'll see a lot of white signs you'll see a lot of green signs mm -hmm. so the white ones non-county maintained those things are terrible shape I've only seen like one paving assessment done up and down on, on one road that I think might have even just done a, they did how do you assess those and when do they come into play as far as bringing them up? Another great question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so those are some of the roads we call B roads. Uh, and, and part of it is um, if they, um, you probably will have to bring them in um, for the county to accept them. And then they become part of our maintenance responsibility. And then you can include them in there as well. So, Chris Patrick. Thank you. Yeah. Well, yeah. So I have four things. I'm not going to match. I've been raising my hands. <laughs> okay. So the current PVAS, if they are in a current PVAS and maybe they have a current PVAS discount and maybe their PVAS doesn't start for eight years or 10 years, it should, shouldn't, they shouldn't have to pay the one and the other fee at the same time or kind of stagger it. Um, two, I think someone had mentioned Moon Lake to redo all those roads with their dirt roads was $40 million. It's a big number. About. Thank you for confirming that. And then, so basically, I would, I would be curious to the break even amount. Um, would we be paying how much a month for the rest of our life compared to if we were coming in? So, if you're paying an extra $10 a month for 40 years, that would be, I don't know. Anyways, so if you're paying 300 to 600 a year, or if you're paying $120 a year. And then over the life, it's going to be cheaper at what break even analysis point can you give us? So if I'm going to pay 300 to $600 for 10 years, is it going to, are we going to pay a, a fourth of that over 10 years? They don't know the number. Like 150 over 10 years, and then it would be bro broke even. Yes. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go back, you know, I'm taking notes in here and come up with that information for you. Um, but we did take a look at it like that, you know, but the data is not finalized, so we can come back with it. Because you don't want to end up paying more or less, but you want it fair all across the board. Thank you. I understand this program would only be for public roads. Correct. It yes. Not, so those dirt roads that are private dirt roads are going to remain private dirt roads. Yes. I mean, that, and public roads that are dirt there is some cost savings to the county because we don't have to send a grader out anymore. Correct. Uh -huh. It's it's not going to be a complete wash, but you're going to have some savings for 
for that. So, all right. So maybe that does help as far as taking care of the dirt road when they do become in to become a, where they want to get paved. Maybe that's the time we take them into the county system and put them into the program too. Or you put them in the program and they fund the greater operations until they become. Right. Paved. Okay. Yeah. Cause we in do some problems. of those we run through pretty routinely. Yeah. Oh yeah. In my area, especially. Yeah. They run it all the time. But, uh, excuse me. I just have a procedural question. So um, you'll do your homework. You'll come back to us. Then do we have to go through the ordinance review? And is it a month and month thing? Or what's the process? I think it's going to depend on the answer. And, and <laughs> if I like mean, it, it really is. But my guess is this is not going to be solved, you know, in the next quarter. Yeah. It's going to take us the time to do some research because yeah. we got to vet some of the numbers that are out there. Uh, we got some pretty significant subcategories we need to look at and see what that means as well. Walk through different options of how to work that process together, you know, with the county attorney's office to be able to bring you something that's reasonably well vetted that can form the start of a program. And then you can say, yes, that makes sense. We want to do it or then tweak it. So it's almost like this is step one. The next step is to come back with a more fully vetted option five with a lot of those sub questions answered. Then you say yes, then you ask more questions, we refine it and then bring you back something you can actually move forward on. So this is probably going to be step one of a three or four step process for you to actually take action. It's not going to be solved in the next quarter or two. And, even. And so, and, and so it's, it's good to know that, but I, so then I'm wondering, I mean, like, Buena Vista, that road is almost become a dirt road with potholes. And so I don't want that to stop. I um, also, there is a road in Trinity Oaks that is uh, in really, really bad shape. I, in the last big storm, drove into a humongous pothole that I'm surprised I could drive out of it. Um, they're, I believe they're going through a PVAS program. Um, I can't remember the name of the road right now. Uh, so what's going to happen to the ones that are in the process now? I don't want it to stop, you know? I, I, I mean, I would suggest that the, those that are still in process, the board hasn't changed the program until the board changes the program. Yes. And so I think we continue to work the existing program until the board changes the program. And then we have the one in... Uh, and understand, if you're going for number five, even if we got it together and got the board to adopt it by this December, you wouldn't see it for the following year. Right. We also have to catch a tax cycle. So okay. the 2023 fiscal Would year be about is the first time, yeah. the first time you'd be able to see this okay. on a tax bill. Well, I just want to... Uh, I know I had some it's consumer amazing. members that were very concerned. They want the yeah, PVAS to go yeah. away. <laughs> of course, I, I said just because it's going away doesn't mean something, you know, something obviously has to replace it. Um, so they, they are listening today. So, um, yeah, I think we want to, you know, I hear it all the time, especially from people who have moved from other places here that they've never heard of the way we do it. And I think you've said that yourself. And we're an unusual animal in the way that we're doing it. And There's I other counties. know There's there'll other be counties. a little transition period, but I hope we get, we definitely get away from this way. Especially 70% of your time is wasted. And, uh, that's, that's a sad number. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. The, uh, the road bridge fund, we've never funded that in the past 16 years anyway. How was that fund set up? What, what was that designed to do? Do you know? The the transportation ad valorem. Road bridge fund we vote on every year. It's funded yeah, to zero. Yeah, zero. What, what, no. was it, what was that set up for, and how was that supposed to work? Uh, I'd have to go back and research I, it. I'm sure Dan know. doesn't know because I've been here longer, and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a good answer. Just being honest. <laughs> now, that, could be, that's, that, that could be something we go back and research. Yeah. Just but that's a vehicle. That's a vehicle that's in place already. That's the way a lot of. Places it, it, is it is, but long. you would not exclude those that maintain their own roads if you went that route. Right, CDD. Yeah, HOA, CDDs, anybody that maintains their own road. Right. Okay. Maybe 
Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Thank you. Then maybe the people that are going through their current PVAS are exempt until they reached the amount that they would have paid in under the new project. Well, well, I hate, so, hate so, to say this without researching right. it, but, yes. the, but so, what's coming to mind is what you may be able to do, and I'm not sure how complicated this would be, is you would use the millage cl collected to fund the payment of their liens. So if they've had a PVAS and there's a lien on the books, their millage would pay that lien down for them. Okay. And so you wouldn't oh. be billing twice. Yeah. And, and that's, that's a way that's to figure good. it out. We need that's to go do some research. Yeah. We'll, come back, we'll come back. We'll come back with some good. options I of that. on that way of paying. But I, I, Branford, do you kind of got direction? Yes. Be good. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I, I appreciate the discussion because we had a lot of questions as we're going through this. Yeah. That we really need needed some. I think there's been Call a good board discussion. Guidance on, yeah, because of some of the, there are some challenges to unwind the existing program. Mr. So. Patrick, my last question, sorry, um, for the tax lien, for when someone else, when someone's getting their roads paved, can that follow the home, or does it have to follow the homeowner property? It follows the property. Those are the property. The benefiting property. Okay, so if I, I understand sure. the question. I thought someone said it has the lien has to be paid off before. So currently what happens is when you sell your property, the title company clears the lien and pays it off. That's what currently is the practice. Because that's what I've heard is oh well if I move in three years and they're paying their taxes over ten years then they're paying for a service that they're not going to ever be able to utilize later on because they're selling their home. So then the new homeowner would take over the payments. Yeah. Well, I guess it was changed well, to millage. You sell well, most people, but what happened, it's more a function of what happens in a real estate closing. And that's, I'm not going to buy your house if it has a $5,000 lien on it. So it comes out of closing, we get paid off. So it goes Lean against the satisfied. House. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Anything else for the good of the whole team? <laughs> so I did hear a survey and the rest of you will, will get a survey for the county that Mark shared with me earlier. It's huge. It's it's great what's happening in this county. Uh, customer customer service wise, we're we're probably ten percent above most counties or governments around us. And even at that, I'm I'm gonna tell you we're not there, but we're going there. We're gonna get to the right place, and customer service is what's gonna get us there. So we got a lot of things happening in the county. Good things happening. So. Just got to guide them the right way. All right. With that, we're adjourned.